Hmm. Oh. It's you. So, you're on kitchen duty today as well, eh? Hmm. Very well. The nerve of this monastery to treat us like scullery maids when we paid good gold to come here as students. <laughs> Still, Lady Edelgard has borne this indignity with her typical grace. And I suppose you have as well. Thus it would be beneath me to refuse participation, even though if I were to prepare food for anyone, it should be Lady Edelgard alone, as I sometimes do when the need arises. Well, let's get on with this. If we're to finish our task and return to more pressing duties with promptness, that is. Hmm. You don't seem quite so annoyed by the prospect of doing kitchen preparation. Good for you. I personally find my mind tending to wander unpleasantly if I am forced to participate in tasks that do not directly facilitate Lady Edelgard and her well-being. I suppose if I am circumspect about it, I can think of this as contributing to her needs by helping to keep her and the rest of the Black Eagles hale and hearty. You know... The fact that the monastery staff allows students from one house to prepare the food for the entire monastery. <laughs> it's a disgraceful lapse in security. Well, think about it. Not just the Imperial Princess, but the noble scions of many houses dwell and dine here at Garrigmok Monastery. A motivated assassin could decimate the entire continent and plunge Fodlan into war. <laughs> or perhaps just Claude and his asinine little schemes, if you could even call his nearsighted antics such. He might try to debilitate the Black Eagles with a concoction that, while non-lethal, would result in a loss of composure and, therefore, a loss of stature for Lady Edelgard. And that is something I simply cannot abide. Mark my words, I will be having a word with the Knights of Seros to ensure that a professor is always present to observe from now on. Do I find it likely that anyone would wish to poison the students here? <laughs> I find the very question absurd. Certainly, Fodlan has known unprecedented peace for years on end now, with the exception of the tragic events of Dusker and the consequences thereof that happened a few years ago. While peace may be present now, I have and ever shall maintain that peace is not the natural state of affairs for humans. There will always be some malcontent or lunatic hoping to accomplish some short-sighted goal by inflicting harm upon their rightful monarch. In the case of Lady Edelgard, many would envy her position, though few should. Ah. Mind not my words in this regard. I merely mean to say that Lady Edelgard bears many burdens as the Imperial heir, none that make such a position palatable, even for the most ambitious of men and women. I perceive that this topic of conversation is less than palatable for you. Very well. Let us speak of the matter at hand. Rather, the matter that our hands are on. Food. Is there a dish on our menu that you prefer more than the others? <laughs> Everyone has their preferences, of course. 
There's no accounting for taste, as the Adrestian saying goes. Oh? You want to know what I prefer? Well, if you must know, I am partial to a two-fish sauté. <laughs> You're not planning on poisoning me, are you? Hmm. You don't seem the type. Nor would such a transparent attempt at divining my preferences for food be a good way to ensure that I ingest said poison. Sorry, was that an odd thing to say? I shall endeavor not to provide any insult in the future. It wasn't my intention to question your goodwill. Merely a little joke. Ah, that seems to be cooking nicely. Hand me that skillet, now. Quickly, lest we wish the food to burn. Hmm. Acceptable. That shall prove to be a most delicious dish once it's done cooking, but any more exposure to naked flame, and I fear our compatriots would be consuming charred ash for their supper. The dessert course will be a much more precise affair. Rather, I will see to it that Lady Edelgard's favorite sweets are only of the highest quality possible. She works tirelessly for the benefit of the Adrestian people. It is the very least that a dedicated retainer should do for his liege lady. Ah, uh, forgive me. My thoughts wander when I am absorbed with my work. In this case, work is making sure that this meat is adequately seasoned. Pass me the salt and those herbs. With haste, lest our food be bland. Sautéed pheasant with eggs is a dish that requires excellent attention to detail in order to prepare it in a way that both Lady Edelgard and I find satisfactory. I imagine a refined palate like yours might enjoy a cup of tea to go with it, eh? Your expression indicates that you perceive my, shall we say, dissatisfaction with the Fodlan tea obsession that has found a comfortable home amongst the nobility. Just ask Von Eyre, or that simpleton Gloucester. They'll carry on and on about tea for hours if you let them. I am not in the habit of letting them. You have been a stalwart sous chef so far, and a decent listener. May I confide in you a small, personal secret? I have always preferred coffee to tea. Hmm. You have an opinion on this matter, I'm sure. Everyone does. Fodlan's nobility has an obsession with tea as a status symbol. But I find that tea pales in strength of character and the possible flavor combinations when compared to the bold darkness that is coffee. I would find it a personally satisfying trend if the nobility and commoners alike were to regard coffee brewing with the same artisan fervor that tea cultivation merits in our culture. Much like with the arcane, the darker the coffee, the more bitter and powerful the draught. But it need not be a painful endeavor, savoring one's coffee. To the uninitiated, coffee preparation typically ends with a cup of grit and mud, barely elevated above dirty, stagnant water. But utilizing cheesecloth as a way to filter the grounds from the coffee bringing the freshest water to boil in a gooseneck kettle. And if one were to then sweeten and lighten it to taste with sugar boiled in milk, well, I foresee that my particular preoccupation with coffee would be a more popular pastime, far more so than tea. 
I do so appreciate your discretion on this topic of conversation. If it were to get out that I, Lady Edelgard's aide-de-camp, were dissatisfied with some aspect of Fodlanian culture, a shade might be cast upon her status. A slight risk, but one that I trust I will not have to worry about unduly. Yes? <laughs> Good. You can trust me to be discreet with any personal information you choose to share as well. We kitchen laborers must stick together, mustn't we? <laughs> ah, it seems that we're just about ready to serve the food. You know, I hope that the next time I am summoned for kitchen duty, that I will have the pleasure of your company once again.